Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm going to share a few tips that I hope will help you to bag more pests this autumn. First up though, I'm heading out rabbit shooting. Right, I'm on the rabbits again this evening. Now, there's starting to be a real feeling of autumn in the air. The days are getting shorter, so I'm really eager to squeeze in a few more of these evening sessions before the nights really start to draw in. Um, this is a particularly interesting permission because a few years ago, there were barely any rabbits here. They, they virtually disappeared overnight. Um, far more sudden than with myxomatosis when you usually see a few sickly rabbits around so I'm assuming it was probably the hemorrhagic disease um, but thankfully from my point of view anyway they've made a real comeback over the past couple of years and this year in particular and in the spring it was heaving with rabbits here now that was to the point that they were causing quite a lot of damage so the landowner was eager to get their numbers ground down a bit I've been shooting here quite a lot since then um, they are certainly more under control now but there are still a few around so the shooting continues because obviously we don't want them to really really bounce back so obviously the landowner's prime concern is pest control but I'll be glad to go home with some meat for the pot. Right so the kit I'm going to be using has become a fairly standard setup for me of late. Um, it's the FX Impact Mark II. It's 2.2 caliber FAC rated and I've got it running at about 30 foot pounds which makes it a real sweet shooter with 16 grain pellets. Um, I've coupled that with the Hawk Sidewinder scope. And again, I've been using that quite a lot. It's giving a really good account of itself. Now, while it's still pretty light now, um, I wanna stay until it gets properly dark. This scope performs pretty well in low light conditions, so it should be the right choice for the job. Uh, as ever, that's held on with sports match scope mounts. Now I'm going to use what is pretty much my standard approach for rabbit shooting and that's to go prone and shoot off a bipod which in my opinion is probably if you've got an area where there's quite a concentration of rabbits it's certainly the most effective way to make a decent impression on them. It saves you from having to stalk around and try and, keep with, um, try and creep within range and obviously it keeps you down off of the skyline and any shots you take should be absolutely rock steady. So I'm going to head off and get settled in. Right, so I'm in position now. I don't want to speak too much, but just to describe the spot where I've settled in, um, it's a relatively narrow field, and the, the far side is like a, a wooded hedge. Uh, rabbits are, are burrowing in there. There's also a little derelict shed, and rabbits are burrowing beneath that. Um, now, as I said earlier, it's still fairly light, but thankfully, I'm in the shade of the building behind me and there's a few trees so I feel like we're quite discreet where we are. Uh, it's just a question of being patient now and waiting for the rabbits to put in an appearance. These rabbits are eager to get out and feed, and it's not very long before the first one shows up above ground. Well that was a great start. Um, rabbit popped its head up out from the long grass about 30 metres, just needed a touch of hold under, absolutely walloped it over. There was another rabbit out, uh, it's more obscured and it bolted at the sound of the shot, which is no great surprise. Um, it's actually a slight breeze pushing across the middle section of the field, but 
with this setup doesn't make any odds at all. This kind of approach is not for impatient shooters, but if you have the patience for it, you should be rewarded with a few shots. And there's another one. Apologies, I forgot to fine-tune the focus on that one. Now, it looks perfectly clear to me, but I know that the scope cam footage can be just a little bit blurry if I don't really fine-tune it. Um, that one was about 45 metres, a bit further. Still needed a little bit of hold under with this setup. Um, the point of impact actually corresponds with the crosshair on this one at about 20 metres, obviously rises up and then again at 60. So as I said, still just a touch of hold under, another really nice solid shot. That one was a little bit closer. It emerged from under that derelict shed. It actually appeared to be aware of us, but it froze, uh, giving me time to obviously take a pretty straightforward shot. I, one thing I haven't pointed out yet, I often, at the start of an ambush like this, kick off by doing a bit of range finding. It saves me from doing it as I take each shot. Obviously, I haven't done that this evening. The simple fact being, that I've shot from this spot several times before, so I've got a pretty clear idea of my ranges here. Haven't needed to do it tonight. The evening is wearing on now and the fading light usually brings the prime time when rabbits are really eager to venture out. Fairly close one at the woodland edge there. And again, there was another rabbit out, but it bolted pretty quickly. Now, this gun's pretty quiet, and I think it's actually the sound of the impacting pellet that actually spooks any other rabbits that are out. And, and that's not really any great surprise because it must make quite a crack, especially being that close. The light is really going. It's getting tricky to see, but
but the rabbits are continuing to creep out into the gloom. Well, I reckon I'm gonna make that the last one because we're really starting to run out of light now. And uh, again, I had to use the illuminated reticle on the sidewinder then just because it was getting lost in the gloom. Um, it's a really handy feature at times like this and certainly helped me to get the precision to put that one in the bag. Um, it's been a decent session. There are definitely fewer rabbits here than there were at the start of the summer. Um, and they're getting noticeably warier, but by sniping them like this, rather than stomping around the fields, trying to get within range, I've managed to account for a few more, and I'll no doubt be back out doing it again pretty soon. Another nice session on the rabbits there. Next up, some hints to help you plan your autumn hunting trips. Don't miss the award-winning Airgun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today, in shops or online. With autumn now very much upon us, I thought I'd share a few tips to help you make the most of what is my favourite season for air rifle hunting. Now the first one is to exploit natural food sources because grey squirrels in particular are going to be making the most of the autumn harvest. Now if you look out for acorns, beech mast, sweet chestnuts and other trees that produce fruit, nuts and berries that appeal to squirrels then the bushy tails probably won't be far away. It isn't just woodland pests that are making the most of the sudden glut of food. Now farmers are busy harvesting maize crops and it doesn't take pests including pigeons and corvids very long to home in on the easy pickings that they leave behind. Now if you find some freshly cut maize with a decent city tree nearby you should be rewarded with some great shooting. Of course, you can also create your own feeding opportunities, and I really rate a hopper loaded with peanuts for grey squirrel control. Now this method just gets better and better as winter tightens its grip and natural food becomes more and more scarce. Give it a go, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. My next tip is simply to sit still. Too many shooters struggle to get shots because they make too much noise wandering around the woods and fields. They find a promising spot and sit and wait for your quarry and you're far more likely to get close shots. You can take your sit and wait tactics a step further by building a hide and it works for a wide variety of quarry. Now as before you need to set up in an area of activity to make sure you get yourself right among the action. Build a decent hide in the right place and you should get shots at quarry that doesn't even know you're there. Another thing I really like about the autumn is the shorter days. Now, a lot of people moan about it, but I really like the fact that it gives me more time for after dark hunting. Also, with most crops harvested now, rats are really starting to move back onto the farmyard. So, if you get out there with your NV gear, you're very likely to bag a few. And don't write off rabbits either. You may be seeing less by daylight now, but if you head out onto your rabbiting grounds an hour or two after nightfall, you'll probably be surprised by just how many there are about. Mm -hmm. 
So that's a few of my recommendations for autumn hunting opportunities. It really is an awesome season for air gun shooting. So get out there and make the most of it. I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership.